June 21st, 2024, the United States Supreme Court handed down a decision in a case called U.S. versus Rahimi, which had to do with a restriction on the Second Amendment right to bear arms or to keep or bear arms. It had to do with domestic violence situations with protective orders or restraining orders. I have done previous videos on the difference between a restraining order and a protective order in Texas. Note that in other states, they put different labels on things and what we call a protective order, they might call a restraining order or vice versa. And I've noticed that in the um, headlines and in the national media, they're using the term interchangeably. But keep in mind in Texas, they are two different things. And you need to know the difference, especially if you ever needed to ask for one. You wouldn't want to ask for a restraining order if you really needed a protective order. However, either one of them could trigger this federal law if it was in a situation that involved domestic violence. My name is Laura Hurd and I have been practicing family law in San Antonio, Texas since 1980. And the Rahimi decision came about because Mr. Rahimi in 2020 had a fight with his girlfriend and his girlfriend was trying to get out of his car and get away from him. He pushed her back into the car and she hit her head on the dashboard. That in itself would be enough for her to get a protective order with a finding of domestic violence because it was bodily injury when she hit her head on the dashboard and she was an intimate partner. You're not required to actually be married for it to be domestic violence. It's considered domestic violence if it's an intimate partner. And in fact, the federal law that was at play here talks about an intimate partner or the child of an intimate partner can get this restriction, this protective order against someone for stalking, harassing, or threatening them. And in that situation, it's considered domestic violence. So in Mr. Rahimi's case, that would have been enough to get him protective order against him. But to top it all off and make matters worse, he went and got his gun and started shooting at a bystander who witnessed the whole thing. So he definitely had a protective order against him. And the protective order meant that he was not allowed to possess a firearm. Two years later, he was suspected in five shootings, which occurred over the course of two months in the area of Arlington, Texas. And there was enough evidence that the police had probable cause to search his residence for evidence that he had committed those crimes. And when they searched his residence, they found a rifle and a pistol. So because they were in his residence, they were in his control, they were in his possession, and he was in violation of this federal law. Now the Department of Justice can prosecute him for the crime of possessing the firearms when he had the protective order against him and it was prohibited by federal law for him to possess the firearms. And so he was challenging that law, saying it violated his Second Amendment right to keep or bear arms. He took it up to the United States Supreme Court. In 2022, the United States Supreme Court heard another case, and that case called U.S. versus Bruin. In the United States versus Bruin, they kind of muddied the waters a bit because they discussed that you had to have a similar restriction traditionally in history that uh, applied whenever the forefathers created that constitutional right. So they created the law and at the same time they had in mind that there was going to be some restrictions on the law because those restrictions were in place at that time. And Ruhemi was resting his arguments on that with the premise that they had to be exactly the same. And the federal law today couldn't have the exact same restrictions as the one at the time that they created the Second Amendment, because at the time of the Second Amendment, the guns we have today hadn't even been invented yet. And besides that, domestic violence wasn't even really a crime back then. So they would not have been prohibiting people from possessing these kind of firearms that we have today, and they wouldn't have prohibited them 
from possessing it in a domestic violence situation because they didn't really care about domestic violence back then. So the United States Supreme Court had to decide just how similar does today's law have to be to the restrictions that were in place when they created the Second Amendment. And the United States Supreme Court, they were not going to strike down a law which protect people in domestic violence situations. And so they found that even though that it's not the same law, it's analogous or it's similar enough that it was okay to restrict the Second Amendment in this instance. They quoted that in the time that the Second Amendment was created, the forefathers did have laws in place or they were restricting the law whenever there was a misuse of firearms in a dangerous situation. And so the legislature today can determine there's a dangerous situation in domestic violence and we want to restrict that use of firearms because of the dangerous situation. And so the, the United States Supreme Court upheld in the Rahimi decision that the Second Amendment does not prohibit this federal law which prohibits people from possessing a firearm. But keep in mind it is temporary in that whenever the protective order or restraining order is lifted or no longer in effect, then this federal law would no longer apply either. And most of them are not permanent. There are permanent protective orders, but most of the time they're temporary. A temporary restraining order may only be good while the divorce is pending, and a temporary protective order might only be good for 10 days if, it, if it's just a temporary one. So the, the restriction against possessing a firearm could be temporary if the protective order itself is temporary. My name is Laura Hurd, and if you enjoyed this video, please look me up.